Hey everyone, it's Nadia from the Idea Designs and I'm back with another tutorial. Today I am making another clock, but it's going to be using some different materials than what you've seen me use in my previous videos. So the first step though is I did use my wooden base and I actually originally did pour resin on it, but I decided that I didn't want the shiny look of the resin. So I ended up painting over it with just some acrylic paint in kind of like a light blush tone and now I'm using a stencil to add in kind of a mandala look to it and I used a darker blush tone and again just acrylic paints to add that in and I used a stippling brush to uh, I guess it could also be called a stencil brush so I used that to create this beautiful mandala in the center of our clock so after that I wanted to add in some flowers. So the idea for this clock is I wanted to have sculpted flowers kind of in a wreath or just kind of a circle around the clock. And I decided I wanted to use uh, something called uh, modeling paste. Now, modeling paste is basically something that's similar to just acrylic uh, paint, but it's much thicker. And as you can see, I'm using a uh, palette knife to actually you know, put the, the modeling paste onto our uh, canvas or clock in this case. So, and it goes on very thick and you can see how it holds its structure. It And as it dries, it will continue to hold that structure. It doesn't flatten out uh, as many acrylic paints do. So it definitely has a lot of body to it. And that's what we wanted for these, or at least that's what I wanted for these flowers. So I wanted them to hold their shape and now this technique I'm using, um, as you can see, I did pretty much a similar type of flower for all the way around the clock. And this is a technique that I've been practicing kind of off screen for a little while. I'm still learning. It's a new thing for me. And I'm really kind of testing out and trying to find my style with this. So I really like how these flowers look. So I wanted to create a piece with these flowers. And we'll do a video in the future where I'll go a little bit more in depth for, um, for exactly what the technique is and how to create flowers like this. So, so once the flowers were all done, I had to leave them to dry and it does take quite a while as you can imagine because the, you know, the modeling paste is quite thick. So it does take quite a while to dry. So I'm sure I left this overnight to dry. And then, you know, once it's dry to touch, sometimes it still has a bit of a give to it. Um, especially the one I was using because the one I was using is a flexible uh, sculpting paste and we can talk about that more in the future as well but so it had a little bit of give but once it was dry enough that it wasn't going to move or be kind of affected by me touching it I wanted to go ahead and add in some more details in terms of like leaves and vines and scrolls and curly cues and <laughs> all different different type of things. So this is using my embroidery technique as many of you who've been following me will recognize. So I'm using my Serenade Relief in Vermeil Gold and then using a paintbrush, a very fine paintbrush to kind of brush in the, the details. So uh, if you want to see a tutorial on how this works, I do have um, a couple actually on my channel so you can just look up look up embroidery technique and or embroidery flowers and you should be able to find them on my channel so again so just want to go through and i did want to make these leaves and all you know, like i said the swirls and the in the vines very ornate looking in contrast to the simplistic styling of the sculpted flower so this was an intentional choice and i really like the look of it so like i said went in and uh, like I said, added in lots and lots of details. I tried to kind of fill in for almost, you know, almost any of the gaps really going around the clock. So, and this is something that, you know, could also be done if you didn't want to do this technique with the embroidered leaves. You could just paint leaves on as well, because again, we're using a lot of acrylics on this piece here. So if you're feeling more comfortable to just paint some leaves on, maybe you didn't, you'd like to have, you know, a green leaves, you know, something a little bit more, 
uh, a little bit more realistic or at least, you know, in terms of the color tones, you could definitely do that as well, especially if you don't feel as comfortable with the outliner. So, and I do have options for outliner if you don't particularly like this one that I'm using, or if you want, if you have difficulty finding them in your area, I do have a video that I'll link in the description as well of other alternatives. So once those leaves were done, the next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to add some glitter, of course. So <laughs> we can't finish off this piece without having some glitter on it. So I did mix my glitter with my varnish and I, I will show all the materials again at the uh, later on in the video. So if you want to see the products I'm using, definitely check that out or even the description under the video, I list them there as well. So, um, so I wanted to add a little bit of glitter into the petals of the flowers and again, just to give a bit of that touch of sparkle, but again, nothing too dramatic here. I'm kind of actually creating, um, using the same tones in the blush colors as the background um, of my clock, because again, I want it to just kind of be subtle, but sparkly. So, um, so once we did this, I, uh, had to leave that to dry again. So this is a bit of a tedious process. It does take a bit longer. Um, so once I was done this, it had to again dry overnight is how I left it. And once it was completely dry overnight, then um, I was able to go ahead and do the um, top coat of resin. So um, I did uh, use liquid latex on the bottom of the clock to kind of capture any drips and things like that. So definitely prep your clock or your board or whatever you're creating um, to, you know, if you want to use tape or liquid latex or school glue, whatever you want to do. our finalized clock. So I already assembled it and everything and I know that I only just kind of went to the the time lapse just showed how I added um, the resin top coat to it but again as mentioned earlier in the video um, this is kind of a <laughs> piecework and <laughs> video tutorial where um, I'm filming this a lot later from when I filmed the earlier stuff and um, but I did want to show you how the final look looks and also the products that I use because I didn't get a chance to show those um, earlier in the video. So um, yeah, so anyway, so as you can see, I got the top coat on and this one I only ended up putting one layer of top coat resin on it because specifically because I wanted the, I don't know if you can see it, I wanted the texture of the flowers to still show. Like I still wanted to have that kind of a raised bumpy look to it because I mean, that's the beauty of this clock is the fact that the flowers are sculpted onto it. Um, if I just completely you know, covered it in resin, you could still see some of the dimension, but you wouldn't really get to really, you know, you know, get that, you know, feeling, <laughs> you know, just that, I don't know, it's a very satisfying feeling to me to kind of feel the actual art. And that's, I mean, as much as I love resin art, um, that's always been one of the things that has somewhat bothered me about it is that, you know, everybody wants that fully smooth glass finish. And for, obviously for a lot of pieces, you can attain that and it looks amazing. And that is exactly the purpose of it. But sometimes, at least with me, I like feeling the texture of the art. Like I like it a lot. And even with um, like if you saw my last week's video with the koi fish, um, I end, I did end up fully covering that so you couldn't feel any of the bumps or the texture of the design, which I think still works for that design. But something like this, um, I think would be a shame to completely just kind of smooth it out. You just, you just, I don't know, you wouldn't get to do this. <laughs> so in any case, um, I did cover it, seal it enough. So, uh, you know, put enough resin so it does seal it. So, um you know, it hopefully won't gather too much dust or get dirty or anything like that. Like you can still kind of wipe it clean if you need to. So that part of it is still there. And obviously we sealed in our clock dial and everything. Um, you know, so we still have some of that kind of a glossy, you know, like I said, if you go like this, you can 
see you can still see that there's a glossiness to it um, but there's also texture so we're kind of mixing a bit of both um, of those aesthetics here so um so i did that and then i did add in our uh our clock mechanism and if you want to see how i do that i have you know a couple of videos that i've done that before uh, i'll link those in the, the description so just check out the description under this video for the link um so you can check that out and yeah so anyways like i said you can see all the detail you know and i really like the detail of you know the white flowers um with a little bit of sparkle and then these the, the detailing of the leaves in there it just I really like it's it's like a simplistic kind of look but yet obviously it's not simple like it's quite ornate but it just there's a simplicity to it that it's just really difficult to kind of explain but anyways so that is basically how i finished off the clock but in order to make it um the products that you didn't see earlier in the video so for the flowers i used uh, a medium like this this is liquitex acrylic medium so it is acrylic product and uh this is a modeling paste. Now that's not the same as a texture paste. Those are two different things. And uh, so this one obviously has more of a paint texture, like a thick paint texture, whereas a texture paste is drier. But in a future video, we're going to go through, you know, I'm going to actually go in more detail between the, those differences and the different types of things you can do with them, um, you know, and how something you know, let's say a flower, how it would look when you make it out of the modeling paste compared to making it with the texture paste. So we'll go through that in a future video, but I just wanted to show you. So this is the product that I was using for these flowers. And you saw when I was making them that they were going on like paint, like a thicker paint. And then I was using a palette knife to put those on. You could use a brush if you want to, but I found the palette knife to kind of give me the look that I was going for. So we have that. In terms of, let's go back a bit to the pink base background. Um, I just use regular paint for that. And because I just, it has a little bit of texture, so I think I might've mixed a little bit of this with some paint. I don't remember exactly what color I used for this now, but I made, I think I custom made the blush and I just used like a sponge. So something like this. Um, that has like a texture to it and you just, you know, sponge it on and that kind of gives a little bit of texture to that background as well. Instead of just, you know, having a painting it with a brush or a roller, it kind of gives a little bit more texture. Not that you can see much of it, but it just, it almost like mattifies the paint in a way. And that's what I was trying to do. So, so we did that. You saw me put, do, do the uh, stencil at the beginning of the video and I just used a stencil brush for that like this and then for the um the little flat the leaves and the vines i used my serenade relief outliner and this was in the um vermeil gold so we use that and like i said if you guys have been watching me for a while you know <laughs> i use this for almost everything so we have that and what else did i do and then also i added glitter and i add glitter the exact same way that I always do but before, I don't know if you I don't think I showed it in the time lapses but or in the videos previous earlier but before I added the glitter something I did is I did add a bit of this which is a chameleon pigment the green gold red this is from DB products resin products unfortunately they have closed their online store so you can't buy anything from them anymore but this is still one of my favorite products and it's I'm going to get it everywhere but so I did mix that with a little bit of my gloss varnish and I did paint that Let's see if we can get a close-up I did paint that so that's the shimmer that you see kind of like on the base like on the the inside of all the fe the feathers <laughs> the petals and uh, so you see that that's kind of shining in there and then um, I add, then I went in and added a little bit of glitter. And I don't know if this is the exact one I use, but it's this one or another one that's almost identical. So then I just use Larissi's glitter. And this is, I don't know if you can read it, it's fairy light glitter. There should be a code on here. So there you go. Um, so I use their glitter and I, this is a chunky mix. So there's fine glitter and chunky glitter. So that's why you see a mix of the glitter in here. And again, I mix that with my Duraclear gloss varnish. And if you're new to my channel and you want a, you know, more detailed explanation of how I added the glitter, how I added the pigment, things like that, 
check any of my earlier videos. Um, there's so many <laughs> that where I go through that process and I actually show how I mix it. I show how I mix the gloss with the, the pigment or with the, gl the glitters. I didn't, again, I didn't anticipate this to be a full tutorial, so I didn't do it here, but um, it's the process is exactly the same as what I've shown in previous videos. So you can check that out. So yeah, so those are all the products and, and here we go. So we have our finalized clock. Oh, in terms of the hands. So I, uh, because it, normally like what I like to do is contrast the dial to the hands. So if, unless it's, you know, necessary to make them all the same. So in this case, I want to do the silver uh, dial face, even though there isn't any really silver any on the clock itself, it has you know, it does have cool tones, like in the glitter and stuff, it does have cool tones. And even the blush isn't, it's more of a silvery blush than a, you know, a red blush or, you know, a darker pink type of blush. So I found that this, the silver mirror actually really complemented it really well. But then for the hands, almost all the hands I have are either gold or black so I wasn't really wanting to use the gold hands on here though I probably could it could have worked but I would have really wanted something that was either you know the same kind of coppery type color or in this case I did find a pair of hands in one of the sets that I had that were white and I think the white just looks great <laughs> on this I'm not 100% sure about the fact that it's such a modern hand on you know such an ornate piece so I may end up choosing to take one of my gold like more the prettier ornate ones and spray paint them you know with a, a matte white and then put those on instead so I may be changing the hands on this clock just because like I said I I like the aesthetic of the white hands on the clock but I didn't actually have any white spray paint on me in order to um, make the hands the spray paint hands that I already have so Anyways, so that is, so that's it. So that's basic, oops, so that's basically the clock. And like I said, I just love the, the feel. <laughs> it's like, I can't stop doing this. <laughs> Anyways, guys, so that's pretty much it for this one. And again, I apologize that this was kind of, you know, a patchwork of videos, um, just like last week's video. It's just, when I get in the mode, the mindset of just creating and testing and trying something new, it's difficult for me to remember that, I should be videoing everything and, you know, talking about it and explaining it as I go. Sometimes I just need to kind of work through it, get it done, make sure I feel like I'm comfortable and I understand it. And then I can, you know, in this case, come back later and voice over it. But um, as I get comfortable with this and move forward um, with it, I hopefully will be able to kind of do more proper walkthroughs for you guys. So um, in any case, like I said, there will be a future video where I talk about, you know, this process more, where I can actually show and teach a little bit more in detail. So I'm going to get going and I hope you guys really like this clock and how it turned out. I'm super happy with it. Like, honestly, I really, really am. I'm still practicing the technique, so I know it's not perfect yet, um, but I do like this style um, of flowers and I am working on, you know, different styles of flowers and different types of flowers and seeing how I can work with that. It's, uh, it's still pretty new to me and uh, even though you know I've tried so many different types of mediums like sculpting uh, paste isn't really one that I try too much with so it's a lot of fun but anyway I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you do don't forget to, to leave a like and uh, if you haven't already subscribed please subscribe and uh, leave a comment in the comment section oh and also I want to mention I want to thank you guys there's a couple a few of you a, you know a good number of you actually that sent in some you know the super chats and the super thanks and the I don't even know what they're all called <laughs> and actually some, a couple people bought me some you know bought me little coffee things uh, you know buy me a coffee so thank you guys so much for that it was such a pleasant surprise it's really fun and uh, the nice messages that come with it so uh, if you want to do that there is a button I think under the video for super thanks and super chats and things like that but there's also I'm going to add a link underneath here as well for my beacons link and that actually links you to pretty much all of my like if you're looking for my website or if you're looking for my Instagram link or if you're looking for the buy me a coffee link like all that's in the beacons link so you'll find that in the description as well so if you're looking for any of that stuff 
check it out there. Um, I love to hear from you. And I want to set up member, I'm thinking about setting up memberships for YouTube as well. So if that's something that you guys would like me to do, let me know. And if I was to do that, let me know in the comments also what kind of perks do you guys want for memberships? Like, uh, I want to create a little community, you know, of us artists or anyone who just wants to kind of talk about art um, or have a discussion with me or whatever. I'm thinking about doing that, getting a little community together for that. So if you guys want to do that, let me know what you'd be interested. I mean, would it be special videos just for members? Would it be little private chats, you know, in Discord or things like that? So let me know what it is you'd like, and I'm going to do my best to see if I can make that happen. I do have quite a few things in the pipeline, you know, working on it. I mean, I know I say that sometimes, and it's been really slow to get some of these things rolled out. But <laughs> that is my life right now. So I am working on it. Just know that it is something that I am working towards. So again, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I will see you next time. Thanks. Take care. Bye.